Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, let's continue on with the second set of examples. And just as a review to reorient ourselves, we're looking at the second types of examples. Now we're going to be given a point and some x intercepts and we're going to use the intercept form of the quadratic equation, which is y equals an unknown a times x minus the first inter in x intercept p times the quantity x minus the second x intercept q. So right here, uh, we start with similar scenarios where we're given a graph, and then we'll move on to where we're given some points. So here we observe that there's an x intercept at negative four, and there's an x intercept at six. So I'm going to list those two points first, I'm going to have my p is negative four and my q is six. Also from the graph, we're given that the vertex is 1 comma 25. So that's mentioned here. Now we start with the equation that we need, which is intercept form, y equals a times the quantity x minus p times the quantity x minus q, where p and q are the intercepts. So all we need to do, which is the same thing we did in the last video, is just replace the letters with the numbers that belong there. So y we know is 25, that's the y coordinate of the vertex. A is the unknown, so that's going to stay. X is 1, that goes there, minus P. Now, in the last video, I made a point of this, and I'll remind you of, of the same thing again. Anytime you have negative numbers being plugged into an equation, you always want to protect them by using uh, parentheses, especially if there's negative signs on the outside. So you don't want to make a mistake by saying, oh, there's a, uh, maybe negative 4 is already a negative, so I don't have to subtract it. Uh, you're going to lose a whole bunch of points for that. So please, please, please make sure that anytime you plug in a negative number, uh, you're saving yourself and you're protecting yourself by using parentheses around it. And then similarly, times one, which is your x value that the function passes through, minus q, which in our problem is six. So now it's just some arithmetic cleanup. Uh, negative times a negative is positive. So here we'll have one plus four, which is five. Here we'll have one minus six, which is negative five. 25 comes along, a comes along. This is just the cleanup of one minus a negative four. This is a cleanup of one minus six. Now five times negative, tw five, times negative five yields negative 25. A comes along for the ride. And then finally, uh, this is a very nice equation. We should be able to solve it very comfortably. In order to solve for a, we just divide the negative 25 over to the other side. So eventually we get that a is equal to 25 over negative 25, which simplifies or reduces to negative one. So the equation in intercept form is y equals a, which is negative one, we just found it, times x minus negative four, which cleans up to x plus four, times the quantity x minus six. The next example is the exact same scenario, although it has to do with fractions. So I, I don't know why, but students tend to um, sort of lose their cool and, and calm collected nature anytime fractions come into play, but we shouldn't. We, we should treat them the same as any other numbers. So here we're given two x intercepts. They happen to both be negative. So negative four is one and negative three is the other. So I've listed my x intercepts here. I know that my vertex is defined as negative three and one halves which uh, in order to change from mixed to improper, we can write this as negative seven halves, comma negative one fourth. So that is my vertex. And just like we did in the previous problem, we start by writing the equation down, the intercept form, and then y we know is negative one fourth right here. A is the unknown, so we keep bringing it along for the ride. X is negative seven halves, so instead of X, I replace it with negative seven halves, minus P, Notice p is a negative number, so I'm going to avoid making a mistake by placing negative four in parentheses, times the quantity x, which is negative seven halves, minus q, which happens to be negative three. So again, we're going to be good mathematicians and stewards of, of signs and use parentheses around negatives. Negative times a negative is positive, so that yields a positive four. This negative times a negative is positive, so that yields a positive three. Everything else stays the same. Now at this stage, I, I cannot add or subtract fractions unless they have common denominators. So eight 
4 can be rewritten as 8 over 2. 3 can be rewritten as 6 over 2. And then once the denominators are the same, now we can add or subtract the numerator. So negative 7 plus 8 would give us 1. Negative 7 plus 6 would give us negative 1. So this entire expression on the right-hand side cleans up to a times 1 half from this first set of parentheses and then negative 1 half from the second set of parentheses. Now 1 half times negative 1 half is negative 1 fourth. A comes along for the ride. Now this equation might seem a bit complicated, but it really is quite simple. In fact, it's easier than all the other ones we've solved. If we divide negative 1 fourth by negative 1 fourth in order to solve for A, we're dividing something by itself. We're dividing a non-zero quantity by itself, which means that the answer is 1. So the equation becomes y equals a, which is 1, times x minus p, x minus a negative 4 would become x plus 4, and then x minus q, x minus a negative 3 would become x plus 3.